Hello students, I hope you all are fine and doing well at your home. Uh, today we will be starting with chapter number 1, Number Systems, class 9th Mathematics. Uh, before starting the chapter, let us recapitulate what you have done in your previous classes, like different types of numbers you have done, what are natural numbers or which you call as the counting numbers also, like 1, 2, 3, 4, as you can count the numbers, so they are called as counting numbers and they are termed as natural numbers also. Now in they are represented by the letter N. Next is the whole numbers. In whole numbers they can be represented like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We can say a collection of natural numbers along with 0 gives you whole number which is represented by the letter W. The next type of numbers that you do is integers. Integers are the collection of all the positive numbers, negative numbers, including 0. Like 0 with 1, 2, 3, 4, that means they are all the positive numbers and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 100 and so on. They are the negative numbers. So we can say negative numbers, positive numbers, including 0. The whole collection will give you integers which is represented by the letter Z. Next is fractions. A number which can be represented in the form of P upon Q, where P and Q are whole numbers and Q is not equals to 0. The denominator cannot be 0 because if the denominator will become 0, it, the number does not exist. For example, any number you take, uh, say, 3 upon, if I take 0, 3 upon 0 does not exist, so it won't be a fraction. On the other hand, if we take 3, 3 can be written as 3 upon 1, okay, so you can say here Q is not equals to 0, so this will be a fraction, 74 upon 15, this is also a fraction because P and Q are whole numbers, this is a whole number, 74, 15, yes, this is also a whole number, in the same way, 0, it is, it is also a fraction because 0 can be written as 0 upon 1, so here Q is not equal to 0. The numerator may be 0 but the denominator cannot be 0. So 0 is also a fraction. Similarly 1 upon 2 and any other number. Now next is rational numbers. Rational numbers are the numbers which can be represented in the form of P upon Q where P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to 0. Now children see what is the difference in fractions and in rational numbers. Here in fraction, P and Q are supposed to be the whole numbers. Whereas in case of rational numbers, you have P and Q are integer. That means in fraction, they cannot be negative. Whereas in rational numbers, they can be negative also. For example, minus 3, 3 because it is positive also as well as negative. Rational numbers include negative numbers as well as positive numbers. Because integers, as we have done, integers is a collection of positive and negative. So, rational number major integers are there. So, we can say negative as well as positive. So, minus 3, plus 3, minus 4 by 7, 0, minus 14 upon 23. And any such numbers can be called as the rational numbers. Okay. Now, Different types of rational numbers you have already done as equivalent rational numbers. Now, as the words say equivalent, the rational numbers which have equal value. Equivalent is a word made from, you can say, equal and value. So, the rational numbers which have equal values are called as equivalent rational numbers. This you have done in your previous classes also. Like, for example, P upon Q, if I take any rational number, say 1 by 2. 1 by 2 can be written as 2 by 4 because if I cancel this, I'll again get 1 upon 2. 10 upon 20. 10 ones are 10 and 10 twos are 20. Similarly, 25 ones are 25 and 25 twos are 50. 47 ones are 47. 94, 47 twos are 94. So they all represent 1 by 2. So we can say 1 by 2, 2 by 4, 10 by 20, 25 by 50, 47 by 94. They all are equivalent rational numbers for this 1 upon 2. So we can say P and Q have no common factors other than 1 here in these two cases like 1 by 2, 1 and 2. They don't have any other common factor than 1, right? 47 and 94, they both have a common factor which is 47. So if I divide this by 47, if I divide this by 47, I'll get 47 divided by 47 as 1 and 94 divided by 47 also as 2. So they have a common factor now 
after cancelling 1 and 2 we get so the overall rational number which we get is 1 by 2 and 1 and 2 doesn't have any common factor other than 1. So P and Q have no common factors other than 1. So to represent all the above numbers on the number line we use 1 upon 2. Like you all know that any number can be represented on a number line. For example if I take a simple any integer if I take a number line and if I mark here a 0 you know you, you have already done it in class 8 also. You can represent the positive numbers on this side and the negative numbers on the left side of 0. So every point on the number line represents a unique number. Now till now we have done like integers. Can we represent any fraction also on this? Yes, we can represent say in between 1 and 2 we have the number 0.5. Okay, or we can say 0.5 as if I remove the decimal I'll have 5 upon 10 or equivalent fraction will be 1 by 2. So I can represent this point on the number line as 1 by 2 also. In the same way 1 and 2 in between the exact center in between 1 and 2 what number we'll have you know this 1.5. So if I want to represent now 1.5 in the form of fraction obviously I'll remove the decimal and I'll write here 10. I'll have 15 upon 10 which further gives me 5 threes are 15 and 5 twos are 10. So a number we have 3 by 2. So in between 1 and 2 this point will represent 3 by 2. So we can say in the same way if it is on the left hand side of 0 then we'll have the number as minus 1 by 2. In between minus and minus minus 1 and minus 2 we have the number minus 3 by 2 and so in any uh, in the same way, we can represent any number on a number line, right? So, every point on a number line, maybe here, maybe here, or maybe anywhere on the number line, it will definitely represent a unique number. This is a very important thing, children, that every point on the number line is represented by a unique number, right? So, now, when we are talking about equivalent rational numbers, let us see here. So to represent all the above numbers on the number line, we use 1 by 2. Like 1 by 2 here is where? It is this point which is exactly in between 0 and 1. That means 0 0.5 which was also represented 1 by 2. So if you want to represent the number say 2 by 4, then also you need to, you can represent it by this number. If you want to represent 10 upon 20, then also you can represent it by this number. 25 upon 50 is also the same number. 47 upon 94 is also represented by the same point on the number line. You need not to write 47 upon 94 or uh, take a long, uh, you can uh, say, uh, you need to take many numbers and then find 49, 47 upon 94. No, you need to first reduce it to the lowest form and then represent it on the number line. Okay. Now, the next thing, uh, finding rational numbers between any two given rational numbers. Suppose any two rational numbers are given to you. This I have already explained you right now that how can you find any number in between two numbers line uh, between two numbers on a number line. For example, let's see here. We have done in between 0 and 1 is a number 0 0.5 which can be again written in the form of 1 by 2. So in the same way we have done 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus 3 by 2. So so many numbers are there but suppose now if I want to ask you that tell me any 5 or 6 or 10 numbers in between say 0 and 1. Then how can you find 10 numbers or any number between 0 and 1. To start with this let us have find 7 rational numbers between 3 and 5. In between 3 and 5 you can just now see a number 4. But are there any other number in between 3 and 5? Obviously, yes, you can say there are many number 3.5, 4.5, we can have 3.1, 3.2, 3.3 and so on, 4.5, 4.2, any number which are there. There are infinitely many numbers in between 3 and 5. But how many are asked? Only 7. So if the question is find 7 rational numbers between 3 and 5. For this, let us write, can we find equivalent fraction of 3? Equivalent fraction of 3. Like 3 can be written as 3 into 1. Again, 3 
into 1 can be again written as 8 upon 8. Why 8 upon 8 children? Because here 7 rational numbers are asked. So if 7 numbers are asked, we generally multiply it by plus 1. That means we have 7 plus 1, 8 upon 8. So here 3 eights are 24 and 3 can be written as 3 upon 1. So it gives 24 upon 1 eights are 8. Similarly, number 5. 5 can be written as 5 into 1. Here we are using equivalent fraction also. 5 is equal to 5 into 1, which is further equal to 5 into, in place of 1, we can write 8 upon 8, which gives 5 eights are 40. And here the denominator will be 1. So 1 eights are 8. Now 24 upon 8 and 40 upon 8. Now here the most important thing which is to be noted is the denominators here should be same. Right? Since here also we have 3 and 5. The denominators for both are 1 which are same. So we can proceed in this manner. Here also at last we have same denominators. So between 24 upon 8 and 40 upon 8 we have many numbers like 24 upon 8, 25 upon 8, 26 upon 8, 27 upon 8 and so on till 40 upon 8. Now how many numbers are asked? We need only 7 numbers. So you can choose any 7 numbers out of these many numbers, right? So this is the case when we have the same denominators of the different numbers. Now what if we have different denominators? Say for example, the question now here is uh, find 5 rational numbers between 1 by 2 and 3 by 5. In, the, in both of these numbers, we have different denominators. One is 2 and another is 5. So let us have the number. First thing to be done is to make their denominators equal. As you used to do it in your previous classes, how to make the denominators equal by taking their LCM, right? So in the same way, 1 by 2 can be multiplied by 5 upon 5 which gives you 5 ones are 5 and 2 fives are 10. Similarly, 3 upon 5 can be multiplied by 2 by 2 because here the denominator is 2 or we can say the LCM of 2 and 5 is <coughs> 10. 3 upon 5 can be multiplied by 2 upon 2 here. So, we can get the denominator same as 10 and 3 twos are 6, right? Now, 5 upon 10 and 6 upon 10. Now, here we have now made their denominators same. Now, we can proceed as we have done in the previous part. For example, 5 upon 10. How many numbers are asked in between these two? There are 5 numbers we need to ask. Uh, it's asked 5 rational numbers. So, 5 plus 1 gives you 6. So, we need to multiply this 5 upon 10 by 6 upon 6 because it can be multiplied by 1. So, the number will not be changed. 5 upon 10 will remain 5 upon 10. So, 5 upon 10 multiplied by 6 upon 6. 5, 6 are 30 and 10, 6 are 60. In the same way, 6 upon 10 can be multiplied by 6 upon 6. 6, 6 are 36 and 10, 6 are 60. So, 30 upon 60 and 36 upon 60. In between these two, we have 5 rational numbers like 31 upon 60, 32 upon 60, 33, 30, uh, 33 upon 60, 34 upon 60 and 35 upon 60. In the same way, suppose here it is asked 7 rational numbers. So, what you do? First, make the denominators equal. Then multiply it by, if 7 is asked, you need to multiply here by 8 upon 8. Similarly, 8 upon 8 here. And then you will find the numbers in between the given numbers. And obviously, when it is asked in between, we do not include the numbers on the extremes. That is because these are the numbers which are given to you. For example, here, this is nothing but it is same as 1 upon 2. And this is... 3 by 5, 12, 3 is a 36, 12, 5 is a 60. So the question which was asked was in between 1 by 2 and 3 by 5. So it is same as you are finding between 1 by 2 and between 3 by 5, right? Let's take one more example. Find 6 rational numbers between 3 and 4. 3 can be again written as 3 upon 1. 3 upon 1 because since 6, number, 6 rational numbers are asked, so we multiply it by 7 upon 7. This gives you 21 upon 7. Similarly, 4 can be written as 4 upon 1, which can be written as 4 upon 1 into 7 by 7 to give you 28 upon 7. So, between 21 upon 7 and 28 upon 7, we have numbers 22 by 7, 23 by 7, 24 by 7, 25 by 7, 26 by 7, 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and total 6 rational numbers in between them. Remember not to include the given numbers when it is asked in between the numbers. So, thank you children.
नेक्स्ट टॉपिक वील बी टेकिंग अबाउट इ रैशनल नंबर्स थैंक यू सो मच